Welcome to another thrilling episode. This is Sean, Thomas, Shark to Sammy, <laughs> and together we are Sparkcast. Spark uh, Sammy probably saw that shark, and on the image of our book that we're doing today, Search for Treasure Under the Sea, which is a coloring book where Optimus Prime seems to be afraid of a shark. Which I, I mean, I mean, most most people are, but as, but according to this shark. Optimus Prime is is only twice the size of a human. I think he's a very that... large shark. Sharks are big. Sharks are big. Uh, and this shark is as big as Optimus, so he should be concerned. The picture has Optimus stumbling upon a giant treasure chest in the bottom of the sea, just sitting there, being guarded by a shark, apparently. Oh. Well, spoilers, there is no shark in the book. <laughs> oh my god. Can't be. It's just like a comic book cover telling me what's in the cover, and then I read it, and I'm disappointed. Uh, yeah, because I was expecting to see the hero just standing there, doing nothing but posing for the cover, and I didn't see any of that inside the actual story. <laughs> I actually read the story before I looked at the cover. I was like, wait a minute, did I? is this something different? Because none of that happened in the, in the story I just read. Uh, so anyway, there was just miscommunication between everyone. <laughs> First, we're going to start with a little background about the artists and writers of this. Sammy, would you like to start reading the uh, history of the writer who wrote this? Yeah, so um, the person who wrote these stories is Dwight, Zon- wow, Dwight John Zimmerman, which is quite a name. Uh, he wrote six of the coloring books, one of the children's books, and two of the activity books. He was also a writer and editor at Marvel Comics in the late 70s for Thor, Spider-Man, and Hulk, and even did the comic book version of Pirates of Darkwater. He also wrote Centurion, She-Ra, and the GoBots kids books, and later went on to write for Topps Comics with X-Files and Mars Attacks. He has now sullied his entire work because he wrote for GoBots. Whatever. Come on. <laughs> I had to stop myself from cheering. Uh, just keep uh, reading. Jeez. Okay. Just get, it gets Do worse, I keep actually, going? Sorry. Also better. So. All right. So uh, nowadays he's a book author and writes the graphic novel adaptations of many books, such as Bill O'Reilly's fictional account of Lincoln's last day in office, The Gold, mm. Yahoo N- 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 Gold Rats book. I can't pronounce that. <laughs> the Gold, uh, from yeah. 1984, that is con- if, uh, uh, it's considered the best-selling business book of all time. Oh, good. So who knows how accurate anything in Bill O'Reilly's book is, since he put out unfactual conspiracy theories and stuff <laughs> nowadays. Uh I seriously never thought Bill O'Reilly would ever show up in any conceivable way on this podcast, but somehow it has. <laughs> that is happening. Uh, this, in, in the weirdest form ever, like who? He, he this, just the made, writer. Ad, he adapts. He adapted the the book. He adapted a lot of books, just regular regular fictional books. or non well non fiction. Yeah. It looks like for a comic book uh, for another artist it, to draw. So it, he it, did all the planning out, like the panel layout, all that stuff. I guess. And adapted it so that it would fit in the comic book um, format, and he's done quite a few of those. That's really weird. Like a yeah. business book as a graphic novel. <laughs> uh, uh, Thomas, you want to read the first artist? Uh, the first artist for this coloring book was Carlos Garzon, an artist from Colombia who eventually worked for Marvel and DC, starting with titles like the comic ap- adaptation of the Star Wars films working on Star Trek, Spider-Man, Justice League, and too many others to list here. Uh, He was famous for creating the character El Dago, which got him the attention from his employers. He did four of the Transformer coloring coloring books. How did all of these people work for Marvel and then, like, did this? (laughs) Well, this this coloring book was put out by Marvel Comics. Well, all right, I could read that. (laughs) Yeah, since they did, you know, Uh... help create it to sell toys and comics when they had that whole division back in the day um i mean i guess and the, well i assume around this time were there many other like comic oh not comic but um publishers of comics besides dc and marvel it was, was the, image where there are a lot of different companies it's 1984 this, this was like the giant uh indie boom of the 80s which hadn't crashed yet oh there was an indie boom mm-hmm. okay because i i feel like around like the 50s and 60s there was a lot of stuff like even for like adults there was just like weird pulp comics and stuff like that but i feel like a lot pulp of magazines away. are amazing what's that sorry pulp magazines are amazing yeah yeah but then i feel like those didn't stay they didn't stick around that long 
Mm-hmm. I assume they weren't around in the eighties and stuff like that, but I guess a lot of people came up behind them and just took their, just replaced well, speaking them. Speaking of pulp, our next artist, Joe Giella, he's been working there since the forties with Fawcett Comics and did Captain Marvel, the hmm. Shazam one. And he also worked for Timely, which would become Marvel Comics, doing humor comics, the human torch, you know, the Android one, not the Fantastic Four one, and Submariner. Uh he then drew the Flash Gordon newspaper comic in the 1970s and did the phantom in the 80s for 17 years so i must have read some of these stories growing up that he drew and the last thing he worked on was mary worth from 1991 to 2016 also the last a sunday one newspaper really... strip what was that no it was like that last one was like out of the blue <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean but yeah but at, at the, this guy is uh gotta be in his 80s at this point I mean, you said he was an artist. No, he's got to be older than that. <laughs> yeah, he's probably. Is he still alive? Is what I would ask. <laughs> I, I think so yeah. because, like, I only noticed in one uh, for the next book. But anyway, so now that you know who helped create this book, let's uh, start looking at it. To read along as we go through this podcast, you can go to c a m p h o r t r e e dot net camppoetry dot net. And go to the Transformers section, Coloring Books, and Search for Treasure Under the Sea. It starts with about eight pages introducing the characters you're going to see throughout this book. It starts with Optimus Prime. He's a noble leader of the Autobots and can transform himself from a tractor trailer into a robot. Alright, this book reads pretty nice. Has some good art of Optimus Prime and his trailer. It looks to be nothing but uphill from here, right Thomas? Sammy? Of course. Uh-huh. All right. So, oh dear God, what page. is that face? What happened? I didn't even get a what page happened? in before everything just fell down. <laughs> oh man. The cars look good. The cars are okay. So, Thomas, can you tell me what I'm looking at? We're looking at two cars. Okay, and what's above those cars? I don't know. I'm blocking <laughs> it out. <laughs> there, uh, one. So this is we're looking at Bumblebee and Willjack. Uh, their vehicle forms on the bottom half of the page, but above them is supposed to be their robot transformation. One of which is uh, has never been seen in any Transformers anything I've ever seen. Uh, Bumblebee has a has a instead of a face, he's got like a four by a, a giant square with a face painted on it. Yeah, it's a thin plank. You can basically. even tell. You can even tell that's what it is. <laughs> And, and it's we'll... robots in disguise. It's fine. They didn't need a face. Uh, he, he's trying not to look like another uh, Transformer. That's what he's doing. And then uh, Wheeljack has no eyes. You can only tell it's Wheeljack because of the left and right like glowy ear things that he has in the cartoon. Otherwise, he's just just a giant cylinder. Yeah, the way that their their robot forms look, it looks like the lower grade stuff that you would get like like out of McDonald's like Kids Mill or something like that where there there's only they only have like two stages of like uh yeah. to transform two pieces to flip over Did it you mean a GoBot? Only... <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't yes. mean a GoBot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, they, they could have had just the toys at the time too uh and not actually known what the cartoon was going to look like. They could have been like, well, I'll just go get the toy and draw that. And they literally drew exactly what the toy looked like. What year was were these but published? But I'm pretty sure Bumblebee's toy didn't look like that when we did the review. I think that's a safe review I, 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 don't, I think that's When, I, when pretty... we did the review for the character spotlight of Bumblebee, I'm pretty sure when I looked at the figure, it didn't look like this. Yeah, I, I think that's just a bad take, especially considering uh, the next page. Well, are we going to read the description about who these characters are? Yeah, I mean, Bumblebee is a sweet boy. All right, go ahead, Sam. I mean, a brave spy. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Bumblebee's a brave spy who disguises himself as a small car. Wheeljack loves to invent things. He can disguise himself as a fast race car. So basically because he... there are slow race cars. So basically he turns into Mirage when he becomes his car form. And They tried. And Bumblebee is not a VW bug. He's just a small car. Small car. Copyright. You know. right, and it's time for uh, Thomas's favorite hero, Cliff Jumper. The I'm sorry, which one is he? He's the fighting Autobot who disguises himself as a fast sports car. He's also got a plank head like Bumblebee and weird feet that look like just half a piece of his midsection so that it folds up easily. <laughs> wow. 
wow. Uh, Braun looks like he also has weird feet. They're just like sticks, sticks basically, <laughs> with like wheels attached to the side. And Braun, oh, and Braun's face doesn't have eyes. He's just got like an Optimus Prime visor, but without anything else. Yeah, like looks nothing like his cartoon version. Kind of looks like a Constructicon almost. But hey, he is that rare form of model known as a van truck. <laughs> yeah, you know. Because he's super strong and super tough, even when he transforms back into a van truck. Next yeah, page. There we go. Uh, Hound is the Autobot Scout and loves to drive in the woods as a Jeep with the Autobot's friends Sparkplug and Spike. We get no description of Sparkplug. Sparkplug and Spike. And Spike is just like, eh, I don't want to be here. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> like, and- that is his pose. And Hound looks like Hound, so... Yeah, he actually looks good. Like and a... so does... Hey, go ahead. No, yeah, just Hound looks good. And so does Megatron in the next page. Got yeah. rid of his crotch trigger at this point. Yeah, but he does look like he's got a bulge there. I mean, I don't know what he he's was looking at He's hiding the morning. trigger there. <laughs> it, does, it does look like he was excited to see some st- somebody this morning. <laughs> it was Starscream. <laughs> Or he's got his diapers on under only there. When you're, you, you only think it's Starscream, Sammy, when you're looking at your fan fiction. You know. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. Thomas, want to read this? This is the deadly Megatron, leader of the evil Decepticons. He is twice as mean when he's disguised as a gun. Yep. Like, okay. And Starscream and Thundercracker are mean warrior Decepticons who disguise themselves as fighter planes. And they both, uh, and Starscream's kind of like, yeah, chucking his fists at the, at the reader. They actually used some line weight to make sure that he's in front of Thundercracker. Cool. Good on them. And we have Ravage. He's a super sneaky and dangerous Decepticon, especially when he's a Jaguar. Laserbeak, who disguises himself as a condor, likes to attack the weak because he's a coward. What? <laughs> you know, like his toy said, but not his cartoon version. As <laughs> I don't remember him being a coward. Sorry, apparently I just... Thomas, I, you, yeah. we'll just rotate from now on. Yeah, Sammy, Thomas, me. Now we're looking at Soundwave and Rumble. Mm-hmm. Uh, Soundwave can hear any sound. He loves to spy as a cassette player. Rumble, his earthquake-making sidekick, can disguise disguise himself as a cassette. He doesn't have his pile driver arms. He looks like he's shaking the ground by just jumping up and down. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> vibrating. Uh, they must have not like had the you know the character bible to look at all that. And then we get to our first awesome puzzle. It says match the transformer with his face in a coloring book where nobody looks like they do in the cartoon except for like five people. Like, we can match out... Uh... Also, how do you tell the difference between Starscream, Starscream and, Thundercracker? and Thundercracker? Yep, I asked him that before we recorded. <laughs> oh. I can match uh, Ravage and Laserbeak, and that's yep. it. <laughs> I can get Rumble there, because he still this looks like the regular Rumble, but squinty-eyed. Soundwave still looks the same. And... Who the hell is that? The Starscream-looking fellow without the joint. <laughs> I, guess, I think no that's Hound. Idea. Is, so this we got an, Megatron. is this an open book test? Can we go flip back a few pages and try to match up the heads? <laughs> no, open. You can't. You can't flip back. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to see the rest. But anyway, on to the story. The Decepticons must rule Earth. Snarls Megatron as Starscream looks upon. <laughs> I look. I'm, I'm just looking at dirt and saying, <laughs> "Ah, the Constructicons are digging over here, or our construction vehicles are digging over here." So. They made little tiny versions of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Sunken ships loaded with gold from the Alaskan gold rush have made this coast an undersea treasure trove, shouts Megatron. As he points to a board with a ruler. With that Please. treasure, we can buy human factories and have them make an army of Decepticons to rule Earth and crush the Autobots, shouts Megatron. As he crushes... Yeah, somebody... A uh, oh. figurine of an Autobot. God, I couldn't figure out what was going on. Yeah, it was kind of confusing at first, but then I, I went back a page and I realized what oh, happened to he's, his face. He's crushing figures that were on uh, that were on that little map table that he had. And his face, yeah, that's why it's evil anymore. He looks just like a regular transformer Dude. humanoid person. And then, oh god, 
Horror Bumblebee oh, shows up. Oh, God. <laughs> this, is, this is big trouble, says Bumblebee. I must warn the other Autobots. <laughs> they're just, like, meeting outside of... A, he's spying on them through a window, and they're, like, just in a house or something. Hey, yeah. <laughs> this isn't, like, a secret lair. There's bushes outside. <laughs> nicely trimmed uh, nicely trimmed bush that he's just peeking over. <laughs> oh. oh, this is so weird. I'll zoom away as a car and be gone before the Decepticons know I'm here, says Bumblebee. And he just transforms. I knew I heard a spy, growls Snarwa- Soundwave. It's Bumblebee. Good, says Megatron. Now we can trap the Autobots and get the treasure at the same time. The Decepticons are going to try to rule Earth, says Bumblebee. We must stop them, says Optimus Prime. What is Spike doing? Also, how awful is this and the previous page? Like, composition-wise. It's like the previous page was Soundwave and Megatron pointing at the window, but they're to the side, and Bumblebee's like half-faded and it's just grids. And then the same thing in the next page. You can tell Hound is supposed to be in the back, but they only did the outline wow. of him. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Yeah. I thought it was just stuff in the background. Just like, uh, yeah. So he's, if the focal point, even like, though he's not, he's supposed to be in the background, they made the background character the focal point. And didn't even fill him in. He doesn't have any details. just his outline. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's, it's, how could that be missed? I'm sorry. I I know I I'm not an art major or anything, but even I could tell something was wrong. Uh, and this right here is <laughs> my favorite page. Um. So after Bumblebee comes and lets the Autobots know that the Decepticons are going to go start looking for sunken treasure, which isn't a very evil act, so I don't know why they're all up in his their business. Uh. Will Jack says, we can follow the Decepticons in this ship I made. And he's standing on a dock pointing to a giant cruise liner, a giant cargo ship that he apparently made by himself that the Autobots didn't know about. And he's just letting him know, in my spare time, I built this giant ship. <laughs> he's bored. He was missing from episodes six and seven. He was actually making this the whole time, which is why he was gone. No, I'm just, I'm just BSing you again. Yeah. No, I mean I'm gonna go with that. That's my head cannon now. I like how the Decepticons are too poor. Now they're they're just resorting to like sunken treasure dreams and stuff like that. And Will Jack has the resources to build a giant ship. Earlier, I thought you said <laughs> why are they all why are they all getting up in Megatron's grill is what you're gonna say. <laughs> and then I wanted to say, but only Optimus has a grill. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this boat. I'm like, I guess Will Jack just wants to replicate human technology. I hope you made it, you know, robot size instead of human size inside. Wow, what a beautiful sight, says Spike. The Decepticons would wreck it, said Optimus Prime. They hate everything good and beautiful like me. <laughs> Gosh, that iceberg is sure getting close, Hound, says Spike. Is this <laughs> oh my God. Without the shading, all of Hound looks like a cardboard cutout. Yeah, I don't like that portrayal right there. Mm. Yow, it's the mean Decepticon Ravage, says Hound. Get behind me, Spike. Growl, I'll tear you to pieces, Hound, growls Ravage. Where oh. did he come from? You know, this Ravage is talking. Uh, he's not talking, he's growling. Okay. He so, says growl before every sentence. You're supposed to interpret so the growls. Is, so <laughs> instead of this breaking continuity, this is actually... You know, him growling and it being translated for the reader, right? Yes. 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 All right. Absolutely. Continu- 100%. Continuity problems avoided. <laughs> All right. But yeah, Sammy, I get what you're saying too. Where where was he? And where was he hiding? <laughs> and they're supposed to be in their base or wherever they were looking for the sunken treasure. They just, they just decided to just go follow the Autobots and get on their ship. Oh, yeah. I, oh, it's not apparent. But yeah, he said we can follow them, which indicates they know where the Decepticons are going. Uh, so they just follow them. because <laughs> Even though Bumblebee already told them where, to, where they were going because, you know, he saw Megatron point to it on a map. Yeah, but anyway. Grr, I'm leaping right through them, growls Ravage. How could this be? With everything a silhouette. Except for Ravage. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the ship, instead of that talking, everyone hears growl, 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 growl. <laughs> I have a trick light, says Hound. 
I use it to fool mean Decepticons like you. <laughs> I guess trick light is another word for hologram. Yeah, that was something that uh, gave me a little bit of pause. Like, a trick light? What is that? Is Was that lingo back in the day when this was made? <laughs> Can you make that out, though? It's like human silhouette. And here he is again. That means he knew that Ravage was watching them and hoped that Ravage would jump out and attack him just so he could show off his powers to his human friend. And he knew that Ravage would fall for it because he's never met Ravage before, and Ravage doesn't know anything about the holograms. <laughs> oh, let's see if Hound scrambled word message. Hound wants you to know the name of his special trick light but he doesn't want the evil Decepticons to know the name. So he wrote the message in code. Unscramble the words. We unscrambled the first word to show you how. A hologram is still... A hologram no. light is what I use. Yeah. A hologram light is what I use. All right, yeah. That was a fun puzzle, don't you think, kids? Yep. <laughs> Yay! Growl. I'm outnumbered, growls Ravage. The Decepticon cat who leaps away will return to beat the Autobots on another day. I guess you're jumping off the ship. Like, screw this. Yeah. With... At least the art's been pretty good the last few pages. Like, everything yeah. has been pretty nice. They turned Ravage into, like, the Riddler with just that weird one-liner. There it is. <laughs> the next page isn't a shark, but it's got a whale. It's a whale. Yeah. It's got two whales. Mm-hmm. Bumblebee, you must go underwater to find the Decepticons, says Optimus Prime. Why does Bumblebee... Oh my god. Bumblebee looks like he has one of those things in the back where you would put a penny and pull him back to make the race car go back in the day if you had those toys. No. But what I think it is, is that's Bumblebee's face. Bumblebee's face is now, oh, the, yeah. is the, is oh. now the ass of the car. He's basically <laughs> His face is made out of the trunk lid. Of, of like an old, just imagine like a trunk lid on an old like Volkswagen, and except it, more square. And it can't close. There's this big black empty space where all the water is just going to fall into his insides. He's just talking to Optimus. He's just like, hey, buddy, yeah, I got to use my face to ass. talk to you. <laughs> yeah. This is flat. Oh, man, that's weird. Oh, God. At least Optimus is, you know, drawn like he is with his jet pack on behind him. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Thomas, what do we have here now? And now we need to take another break. Uh, so soon. I feel like it was only like three pages since the last puzzle. <laughs> uh, Bumblebee's undersea search. Bumblebee is finding all kinds of things under the water. Write the name of each thing he sees on the line beside it. We put all the right names at the bottom of the page to help you. Have fun. So basically... Bumblebee has already just jumped in the ocean. Well, he's underwater, but there's also in a... the ocean. <laughs> You're just supposed to name everything under there, like that's a whale, that's the uh, fish, and that's the seaweed. Yeah, so just matching up words to the picture. Yeah, probably the easiest thing in there. I bet Buster would like that cassette and cassette player. Thinks Bumblebee. I'll get it for him. Hmm. Wonder who Buster is considering yeah, how what? they said it was Spike earlier in the page. Mm. This goes back to the whole, you know, Spike was used for the cartoon, whereas Buster was used for all the children books things, where early on they must not have uh, remembered what they were using for what. Or so. Uh, and now we actually, my prediction came true. We now see his face on the back of his car. And for some reason there's decorations on top of him, like he can shoot a missile out of the top of him. And I like how the Decepticons, uh, Soundwave and Rubble, are just a cassette player and a cassette sitting there at the bottom of the ocean, just kind of chilling there. Casual. And he thinks that that would be a, a worthwhile gift for Buster slash Spike. A waterlogged radio that's <laughs> just been sitting in salt water, I'm sure. Well, maybe he thinks it's, you know, <laughs> Autobot technology, which lasts forever. Yeah. Huh. We tricked you, Bumblebee. We're really the Decepticons, Soundwave, and Rumble, shouts Soundwave. <laughs> As like... Rumble is in mid-transformation. <laughs> That's like half of the people in this book are in mid-transformation. <laughs> Fair. And now you are our prisoner, says Rumble. Oh no, says Bumblebee. I can't do anything like, you know, run away. <laughs> now, 
Megatron's undersea Decepticon maze. Oh. Soundwave and Rumble take Bumblebee through a maze Megatron made to fool the Autobots. Find the path Soundwave and Rumble must use to get to Megatron. Well, what if you're a kid who just wants to not play because you don't want to help the evil guys win? <laughs> so, you know, you just rip this page out of the book. Or you just stop reading the story because you don't want to be evil, guys. I want to be evil. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the undersea treasure we found, says Megatron. With it, we will beat the Autobots once and for all, as I sit casually on this pile of treasure. <laughs> <laughs> Hoarding it. Aren't they, why aren't they converting this gold into Energon cubes? They do that with you know practically everything else. <laughs> we shall use this truck to take the gold to town and buy the factories to make Decepticons, says Megatron. What? Okay, <sighs> first of all, Optimus Prime is the truck they're using. Megatron doesn't know what Optimus Prime looks like in his truck form, unless he painted himself differently. So why? But why would they? No, nobody. So far, nobody recognizes anybody. And how did he get off the ship to go to this place in the first place? Why would he tell Bumblebee to go underwater, go check things out, if he was just going to come himself anyway? <laughs> and, then, and he made it through the maze by himself. <laughs> No, he didn't make it through the maze. He was taken through the maze. No, Bumblebee was taken through the maze. Optimus is just here now. He went through the maze. I know, he was supposed to be on Yeah, I mean, he's a truck. <laughs> and then he he says, just drove on top of it. <laughs> and, yeah. and their plan is, we're going to buy factories to make Decepticons. Like, I guess they're going to be mindless shells, you know, without sparks and stuff. So you'll get, like, you know, cannon fodder. Yeah, well, stuff you couldn't, uh, stuff I mean, you couldn't have in cartoons. I do like how Megatron's got a sweet golden chalice, though, among the pile of gold. Yes. That's what you think, Megatron. Attack, Autobots. Save the Earth, says Optimus Prime. We shall not let Megatron buy real estate and become a legitimate businessman. We all saw how that turned out in our other children's book. Oh. We all know that Decepticons can never earn an honest living. I love how they're all just kind of, like, phasing through the trailer, too. Like, they're not really, like, it's not animated or, like, there's a, oh, the a transition. Look at the angle of the trailer. It's indicating that the trailer opened up and folded out, and they're standing uh, inside. Yeah, yeah, no, this is still... Uh, it's still bad, but... Yeah, the <laughs> scale is way I off. I can get it. I can get what they were going for. Uh, all right. All right. Even though it doesn't so the... make sense. Nothing so the make. next page is the best page because it's Megatron's secret weapon. <laughs> is his secret weapon Starscream? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> like uh, it's so obvious that it's Starscream. Like they don't even need to. Jesus. It's Starscream Mega... without lines. Yeah. Wait. Megatron is sending a secret signal to a secret weapon. K secret secrets. Connect the dots so you can see what the weapon is. Then tell Optimus Prime quick. <laughs> Good lord. Megatron says the Autobots are attacking, shouts Starscream. Let's hit them high, Thundercracker. Fight, Starscream, says Thundercracker. We'll strike so fast the Autobots won't know what hit them. I like how Starscream has to be told how to do his job. <laughs> after, after he's the one who just told them the Autobots are attacking. Oh my god. <laughs> oh look, it's another super secret message. It's just <laughs> Bumble's super sight secret message. Oh my god. Bumblebee sees something in the sky. He tells Optimus Prime his message in code because he doesn't want Megatron to hear it. Because apparently nobody can, like, unscramble words. Uh, help Optimus Prime out. We've unscrambled the first word for you. Unscramble the rest before Megatron attacks. Starscream! Starscream <laughs> and Thundercracker are attacking. Are attacking. That's, yeah. As soon as I saw the Thrakkacker in the word, I was like, <laughs> I know what this is. I like how he sends a secret message to, like, as if Megatron isn't aware that the people he ordered to come attack <laughs> is coming to attack. And, and what is what is with uh, Bumblebee's chest? He's got two little indents in the top. His middle has like what looks like a HP meter, uh, with like a with like a like a slot to stick something in, like before a USB drive. the type of USB drive existed in 1984. <laughs> sure. <And> then, <laughs> The only thing I can guess is maybe that's like the dashboard from the inside of the car. No. Maybe. Nah, I don't, I don't, know. Know. I don't <laughs> know what it is. Our rockets will knock them out, says Starscream. 
Time to change, Autobots, says Optimus Prime. Fight back on four wheels. More I, mid transformation with Optimus. Had, I seriously Optimus read the last word I... first and heard. I thought I was going to read wheelie, and I was like, no, not really. Optimus' head just on yes. top of the truck <laughs> is killing me. Like a, a hood ornament almost. <laughs> like even, and like w- one arm out. This. Like <laughs> You have to see this to believe this, viewers. It's just. The trailer of Optimus Prime with one of his hands sticking out like it's punching and his head right on the top of the trailer. Oh my god. So weird. And and Sammy, you can see that the trailer was closing back up from where he let right, up look, the people. <laughs> look, it wasn't drawn like that in the other page. <laughs> if you've got so many explanations, Son, why don't you explain to me how what <laughs> what happened with the transition? How did they come from deep underwater on top of a pile of gold to driving on land, getting ready to get shot at by, you know, the flyers. You don't understand. They are in Megatron's boat. Oh, my God. He doesn't have a boat. He was going to use a truck. (laughs) The three aerial pictures show them just attacking land. But I'm pretty sure that Megatron had a boat. He didn't no, he didn't have a boat. He was just okay. there. What does the maze say? Why would he why would he need a boat? Oh, see look, they took Megatron has an 18th century wooden vessel that they are hiding out on. No, according that's the to this sunken maze. ship that has the gold. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's the whole point. That's why he decided he was going to use the truck, the Optimus uh, truck to carry okay. away the gold. Otherwise, he would just put it on the boat. Well, you know, they're transformers. <laughs> they're unaffected by water. So they can just change and drive with... Oh, and the next page shows even the humans went with them underwater. It makes sense. It's fine. Yeah. Yahoo, says Spark Plug and Spike. Those rocket blasts are bouncing off like rain. Right, says Braun. Nothing can hurt me. Ah, whatever, Braun. You can't run away from me, Cliff Jumper, says Thundercracker. <laughs> then I'll have to do this, says Cliff Jumper. <laughs> wow, he's got a giant gun that shoots comes out of the top and shoots at things. Wow. What? Yow. Glass. Gas. Says Thundercracker. <laughs> I must leave before I break. <laughs> what is glass wow. gas? It, uh, it's, a, it's a weapon that turns you into glass so that you're easily more breakable and lasts 24 hours. You know, I don't know. It's got to make stuff up in your head when you're a kid because stuff isn't explained to you. When you guys read books as kids, if stuff didn't make sense, did you ever just, in your mind, subconsciously fill in the blanks? I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like I would probably just gloss over it and just like, okay, that's a thing, and just flip the page. (laughs) Draw a line connecting the Autobot robot to the vehicle it can turn into. We did the first one to show you how. So we have another game here. And uh, this one is actually easier, because you've been reading the story now, you know who they all are. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> Sammy? I'll make an earthquake to swallow up the Autobots, says Rumble. Yeah, I'm leaving, says the cowardly laser beak. <laughs> okay, hold up. <laughs> hold up. We gotta use laser beak for the thing that shakes the ground, but laser beak can fly. He's flying underwater, remember. But that they're doesn't... on the ground. They're not on in the no, water anymore. No, they're underground. This is under the water, the bottom. How can he but fly? Did they just the water? shake the water? Yeah, they forgot to add little bubbles, you know, to indicate they're underwater. <laughs> oh no! Says Rumble. The earthquake is swallowing us and not the Autobots. What? <laughs> good, good thing I know how to control my powers. Yeah. Why? How did Starscream yeah. get in the hole? He was flying. <laughs> he never got shot. Thundercracker got shot. He no, Starscream and battle. Thundercracker are in here. <laughs> he came oh, to prove God. himself to Megatron. All right, and the Decepticons will be back, says Optimus Prime. But we will stop them because we are the Autobots. As the sun shines behind them, on land they're still underwater. <laughs> nope, they look to be on land now. Okay. Weird faced Optimus Prime and. 2, 2D cardboard cutout hound. <laughs> I don't know why he always looks like he's in 2D instead of three dimensions whenever I see him. Uh, and then there's the solutions to the puzzles and the end. That was it. So Thank God it's over. I like how different writers came up with the exact same idea of Rumble screwing everyone <laughs> over and knocking his fellow Decepticons 
into the rubble because he did this in the other book we read, Autobot's Secret Weapon, as well. Well, maybe nobody they, likes rubble. Maybe they feel like that's something to use because they probably are also confused. With like, well, how is this like a targeted attack? If you're shaking the ground, you're shaking the ground. I mean, surely you're gonna hit somebody else. <laughs> well, you know, in the cartoon. I could have sworn I've seen cartoons. I don't know if it was Transformers where people just step on the ground and cause a straight line at somebody who they're facing. You know, you've never seen earthquake powers like that. Well, yeah, I have. I, I haven't seen Rumble exercise that kind of control. <laughs> yeah, not even the cartoon. But it's it's kind of a, it's kind of uh, obvious though that all these books were made before the cartoon because Rumble is once again only using his feet to shake the ground by just this time just standing there and vibrating. <laughs> So that was Search for Treasure Under the Sea or The Stop of Megatron's Evil Legitimate Business Plan. Evil. <laughs> so legitimate. Yeah, he just wanted to steal some treasure, which is actually not stealing because it's outside the jurisdiction of the United States and belongs to no country because of how deep and far it is out from the U.S. And then he wanted to legally purchase property and make a legally purchasable factory uh, buy materials and make robots. You know, granted, those robots would then try to kill all the humans and dominate the planet, but still. I mean, three quarters legal, I guess. I mean, either way, if. I mean, Optimus seems so eager to shut down such a quote unquote evil plan. Like, why does he keep letting them get away? Why doesn't he just deal with them? If... Uh, they fell into the Earth's core, so he assumes, you know, and then eventually they'll find out that the Earth's core actually has. You know, energy in it, and that'll lead into the Fire in the Sky episode we watched. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's a nice bow to tie everything together. <laughs> I don't think I have anything else to say about this book. I'm ready to I, sign out. <laughs> same. I yeah. I'm pretty done. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh. Are we gonna well, sign waiting out? For you. I thought you were in the episode. Our is dead right now. Uh, uh, yeah, there's and this is, and this is okay. So this is Sean Taconicus, just Thomas, <laughs> Sammy B, and we will see you next episode later.